Well, being as you guys seem to love these videos where for the next few minutes or so, we start to become very grateful that we've got everything working up here properly. We shouldn't have said that. Oh man, so with that, as you can see, once again, I will be doing a woke TikTok reaction. And if you manage to withstand all the craziness you're about to see and you make it to the end, because I actually think this might be the longest TikTok video I have ever done, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to see that. But before we get into this one, if you could make sure to leave a like rating as it really, really helps out the video. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video, share this video around. And, uh, well, let's lose some brain cells, ladies and gentlemen. A very serious question for those of you who keep missing my gender. When have you ever met a he, him who looks like this? Huh? She, her, yes, they, them, sure. He, him, who? And if you do know a he who hymns like this, power to him. But the he, hims I know never he the way I, she. So when I present you with she, they so kindly, could you not he, him all over my sleigh? Thank you. Yeah, all I'm gonna say is, uh, something's not quite right there. <laughs> it's a common theme throughout this video. Gender, by the way, is more than just a costume, and whilst I appreciate this person's serious question, I think I have a serious question on the behalf of everybody watching right now as well. Uh, how did it come to this? <laughs> an answer we'll never get. If you're a teacher and you consider yourself to be an ally to queer students, I'm sure you already know to ask them their preferred name and their preferred pronouns, but don't overlook the importance of asking them who you can use these pronouns and this name in front of. So ask, can I use it in front of your parents, your classmates, other teachers, administration, everything like that, it's just as important to protect the identity of your students as it is to honor. I mean, you just gotta love the teachers that clearly want to keep secrets away from parents. You gotta love them. We need more of them in schools. I, I can't understand why a lot of people want them fired from schools. It's really mind boggling to me. Homeschool your children, ladies and gentlemen. These people should be kept far away from schools. Why do I not care that men are losing home? Have you seen men recently? Have you dated them or been married to them? Do you know how they think and operate? Do you know what they do and how they treat women? Have you seen what they're capable of? Have you ever dated one? Unfortunately, men, this is how some women view us. We must all stick together. She seems like a lovely wife for somebody out there, but I do not wish that on any man watching right now. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it, that men losing hope isn't considered a priority in society. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. I have never seen people need validation so much in my life that they will now dye their armpits the colour of whatever flag. Help me! Help me! White privilege is the understanding that all things being equal, black people have to go through the additional hurdle of being black each and every day in the United States. It's always white liberals. Not saying that white people have lots of privileges and fly on private jets. Best way to explain it is to look at two people who are completely equal in every way, that have limited resources, limited opportunities, struggle, they're poor, no nothing is going great, two equal people, but the only difference is one has black skin and one doesn't. The black-skinned person in the United States of America has an additional hurdle to overcome each and every day. Alright, let's just set one thing straight here. America is one of the least racist countries in the world. There is nothing stopping a black man achieving something that a white man can achieve. It is equal opportunity now. In fact, in today's world with DEI, people who are from diverse backgrounds get handed opportunities because of diversity, equity, and inclusion. There are some companies out there who won't even employ white people. It has to be signed off. Ah yes, white privilege clearly still does exist today. And again, it's always these white liberals trying to sell oppression to people, isn't it? So I'm a gender. I don't have a gender. I'm not a girl, not a boy, whatever. And you know, <laughs> I don't expect you to know that right off the bat. I mean, I'd love it if people didn't assume gender, but if you look at me and think that's a woman, okay, here's where the problem comes in. If I then tell you, because you're like, oh, hey, lady or missus or whatever, and I'm like, oh, actually, I'm not a lady. I'm not a woman. I'm non-binary. I use they, them pronouns. If after that intervention, you're like weird or transphobic, envy-phobic. Envy-phobic. Just ignorant <laughs> and kind of lazy and just... <laughs> 
purposefully being obtuse for no reason, like, then we have a problem. You don't have to know what my gender is, but when I share it, you better respect it, you better honor it, you better use my pronouns, or you're out of my life. And, like, it's a privilege to be in my life. I don't think transphobes understand that. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You must conform to somebody's worldview. You must conform to how they feel and how they see the world. It's controlled language. You must be, you must all be a part of the delusion or there is going to be a problem. You can't force people to see the world how you see it. And I guess, you know, we all feel so sad that we can't be a part of your life. That is such a privilege. You know, it really makes me sad. And I'm sure you guys feel sad as well. Everyone should be a fat liberationist. It's really quite simple. I'll do this, man. <laughs> Everyone in a society that has the system of fat phobia within it, which is most westernized or colonized areas, is going to be negatively impacted by fat phobia and anti-fat bias. Depending on how small or large you are, the fat phobia and anti-fatness will affect you in different ways and will have different material realities. But no matter your size, fat liberation benefits you. Oh, Imagine it? what it would be like if we were all liberated from the idea that our bodies have to be smaller or look a certain way in order for us to live our best lives. Imagine if everybody could wear what they wanted to wear without having to worry whether or not they'll be able to find it in a store near them or not. Imagine spending your time worrying about anything other than your body. Well, there are some people out there, unfortunately, for you in this message, that actually care about their body and spend a lot of time, you know, working on their body to make sure it's the best it can be on the outside and on the inside. You know, your body is a temple and fat liberation seeks to dismantle all of that. Fat liberation doesn't benefit anybody. It makes people unhealthy and it is not something that should be celebrated. It is sinister. It really is. I don't understand how we are pushing this message that is telling people it's okay to be hugely overweight. It's okay to be unhealthy because when these people end up lying on those hospital beds because of the health issues they're going through, only then they realize the lie that they have been sold. How about we don't reach that point and we tell people to be healthy, we show people how to be healthy and get rid of this garbage message. That would be great. Why, hello, friends of Disneyland. This is Stephanie today. Can you guess who I am? What? I am what? Pippi Longstocking. I'm not the great pumpkin today. It's so fun to dress as a storybook character. It makes everyone happy, and I always have such a good time. You see, when I was younger, I, I used to watch Snow White. The witch in that film actually used to scare me. For some reason, that is unlocking that childhood trauma right there. I mean, I'm a grown adult, and this makes me want to run away from the screen and never come back. Yeah. <laughs> that is genuinely scary. I'm not even gonna lie. Hi, my name is Asa. I am a member of a DID system, and I'm also a bearded vulture Therian. Sorry. I have two questions. One is for other Therians, uh, specifically bird Therians, um, and the other question is for other systems who have Therian system members. So first question for other bird Therians, what are some things you do that help you feel more connected to your stereotypes? Stereotype. Like, I know that for people whose stereotypes are four-legged, they what? can do quadrobics, and that helps them a lot. Um, but obviously that's not applicable to bird Therians. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, ladies and gentlemen, I did struggle to understand about 95% of what this person was saying, but one thing I did learn from this is, and this whole video, you know, we, we just have a massive mental health crisis going on. Uh, people are now identifying as birds, it seems, with the pronouns of they slash z slash bone slash brittle. Yeah, we're in the end times. We really are. Nature is gay and clownfish are trans. No, really, they are. All clownfish are born as males, but when the dominant female in a school of fish dies, a male can transition to female and take her place. And it's not just clownfish. The ability to transition between sexes has been documented in thousands of other species. From striped maple trees that can change their biological sex multiple times in their lifetime, and yes, trees have sexes, to banana slugs that are hermaphrodites have both male and female sexual organs inseminate each other at the same time, double the pleasure, double the fun, and they have giant so while humans might need some Why did we need to know that? Transitioning is nothing but natural. I'm gonna cut him off there. 
Sorry, these are the lengths some of these people go to to try and justify why men can become women. We're not clownfish. <laughs> We're not slugs. We're not trees. We're humans. I think the quicker these people start to understand that, probably the better. And whilst we may not be clownfish, we are certainly living in a clown world. It's my favorite day of the school year. Every year, right around MLK Day, either the Friday before or the Friday after, my high school hosts an entire day of learning and service. So just to be clear, we give them MLK Day off, and then we have another day where instead of classes, we have like a whole day of learning. Let me show you. First donuts, obviously, but here you can see the entire schedule. This is an entire school day, right? This isn't just like a one hour assembly. This is from nine to three. We start off with our entire school hearing some opening words from our fearless leader, Akina, our head of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And of course, Louise, our social and emotional wellness coordinator, who talks about how to have uncomfortable conversations and learn about difficult topics. I didn't get any videos from the morning session because I was leading one of them, <laughs> the biggest one, no big deal. But uh, basically kids get to choose. They kind of rank their choices from what the teachers are offering. This year, you can see we had a lot of things. We had a banned book activity where the- Hold on a second here. Banned books, banned history, LGBTQ plus rights, political operatives, prison system, climate change, unhoused. This is what they're pushing onto kids today. They're letting kids read banned books, talking about LGBTQ plus rights, climate change, Oh, look, man, schools are crazy right now. The indoctrination some of these kids go through is insane. And also, I missed at the beginning there, they're having speakers all to do with diversity, equity, and inclusion. I wonder what conversations are going on there. Yeah. Brainwashing. Uh, basically, kids get to choose. They kind of rank their choices from what the teachers are offering. This year, you can see we had a lot of things. We had a banned book activity where they're specifically looking at children's books Crazy. and reading them and why have they been banned. I talked about banned history and conversations around like the teaching of U.S. history. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there, right, that you can see. Um, but after we have those small group sessions, we brainstorm questions for our panelists and then we come back. Then we hear from a panel of amazing community leaders and activists and educators. Pause if you want to see the list of people that we got this year. It was incredible. And it's always amazing to me to see the students that want to stick around at the end and have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Again, homeschool your kids. I'm a general dentist and inaugural faculty at High Point University Workman's School of Dental Medicine. African-American history, culture, and progress hasn't always been taught, well understood, or respected. So in regards to diversity and inclusion in both the workplace and in the classroom, it's critical to highlight that only less than 3% of working dentists in the United States are African-American men and women. I think there's a general challenge when it comes to recruiting students of color uh, to schools of dental medicine. Historically, we've had uh, less access to resources, including schools that at one point we could not attend like our other ethnic counterparts. Many underrepresented populations are minorities, and research does support that when patients have providers who they can relate to and who may look like them, this can improve both patient outcomes and compliance. We simply cannot improve patient outcomes without valuing diversity and inclusion in both faculty and students. Well, lucky for you, my friend, uh, DIE is now the new fashion trend, so people who aren't even the best at their job most likely will get qualified. And especially when in this area, I think most people would prefer somebody who is actually good at their job than diversity, equity, and inclusion. As always, with any industry, if you start to hire people based on the color of their skin and where they come from and not how skilled they are and how good they are at the job, the quality always goes down. The best people at the job should get the job. That's how it's always been and it's how it always should be. It's insane. But remember, white privilege does exist. And these countries, America, England, are just very racist. But if you made it to the end of this video, as I said earlier, well done. Leave your comments down below. I want to thank you all so much for almost getting to 60k subscribers. We're on about 59.5. Absolutely insane, man. Very overwhelming. I simply can't believe it. anybody who's ever left a like rating left a comment or even shared any of my videos i appreciate it so much you wouldn't believe so again thank you all so much it means the absolute world but until next time it has been your boy jd have a great day stay safe and i'm out peace